Um, it's good to see everybody again. Um, uh, Jim, uh, Stephanie, and Lucas, thank you so much for organizing the event. Um, you know, uh, I'm Mark Catalano. I'm the co-founder and CEO of TakeShape. Uh, at TakeShape, we build an API mesh for the Jamstack. So what is that? Uh, and kind of the the topic of the topic of what I'm going to present tonight um, is uh, is API meshing. What happens when the Jamstack grows up? And so we talked a little. Jim kind of did a great introduction of what the Jamstack is: uh, JavaScript APIs and markup. JavaScript and markup have gotten a lot of attention in the Jamstack space. Um, you've got amazing frameworks like Next.js and Gatsby. You've got amazing hosting solutions like Netlify and Vercel. Um, and you've got a ton of APIs that exist out in the ecosystem uh, to use to build your applications with when you're, when you're building on the Jamstack. But what happens when your Jamstack application gets more complicated than just something like a blog or something that you're, uh, you're building uh, just in your static site generator and it's just rendering out static markup. Uh, and that the answer to that question was not really apparent to us uh, when we initially started TakeShape and, and started developing these ideas around what an API mesh is and, and what kind of problems, problems that can solve. Uh, but essentially what, what I'm gonna demo to everybody tonight is um, what we've been working on over at TakeShape and uh, what an API mesh can do for you. Uh, but the general idea is that when you have that whole constellation of APIs that you're working with, how do you bring those APIs into a more central location and give yourself a single um, GraphQL API that's easier to work with? Um, and some people might think of this concept as as an uh, as sort of a, an API gateway, um, and we've been thinking about it as an API mesh, and you'll see why why shortly. All right, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. All right, um, so the, the example that we're gonna look at today is an example of using an API mesh with an e-commerce site. Um, also, just a, a, for Jamstack events, I just wanna call this out. There's going to be an e-commerce Jamstack summit uh, at the end of May on May 26th that Netlify is hosting. So just another event to, to throw on your, your calendar for all the folks that are in the Boston community. Um, we're going to look at an e-commerce example today of how you use an API mesh to, to build an e-commerce website. So the site that we see on the left is a Next.js project that is a, an, e an example of an e-commerce site that is not using your traditional e-commerce uh, uh, idea of just a simple like list of products. We're, we're showing off something that has that's a lookbook-based e-commerce website where you have looks and groups of products that are a part of those looks. And this is a, a Next.js site, um, and it has a, has a corresponding Next.js template and everything that goes along with it. What's really unique about this site is that all of the data that's powering this website is, actu is actually coming from a couple different sources, but passing through uh, TakeShape's API mesh to create a single API that feeds this experience. Um, so things that are coming, we're using two separate APIs. We're using TakeShape's data store API and we're using Shopify's e-commerce API to build this site. So our the idea of our looks are represented from TakeShape's own data store. And the idea of our products are represent coming down from, from Shopify in this example. We can see kind of over here to our right, we've got uh, a list of products in our Shopify store. Um, and uh, if we pop over to this UI, this is the, the Take Shape data store UI, we can see that we have uh, looks that correspond to what we see over here. Uh, and uh, for example, our adventurer look uh, contains the idea of a flannel shirt and a black beanie. Um, This is all represented. This website that you know allows you to add things to a, a card and and run a run the checkout is building the site off of these two separate sources. And all of this is actually represented in a GitHub repository, just like you'd have any any kind of Next.js pr uh, project, with kind of one special change, which is that you have the idea of a pattern uh, inside the repository. 
So a pattern is something that's specific to take shape and it contains sample data it, and it contains kind of importantly a schema file. And this schema file is, is kind of the core magic that's going on with uh, the take shape API mesh. It allows you to define the, the way that two APIs connect to one another um, and uh, form a single type. And in this case, that, that type is, is, a, pro, is a, a single product. So if I were to, to launch our, our brand new API over on, on TakeShape, I could click the, our deploy button right here. And then I could say like Shopify Lookbook Boston. And we're gonna go and make a GraphQL API that does pretty much exactly what we're, we're, we're doing over on the left here with uh, our existing API. I'm gonna authenticate over to my, my Shopify shop. So this is telling me that I need to authenticate before I can proceed. TakeShape's gonna handle all the authentication for me and handle all the connection to, act to Shopify. And then it's setting up at the same time, it's setting up the relationship between the idea of a product in TakeShape's data store and a product in, in Shopify. So we're gonna bootstrap our data really quickly. Uh, we're going to bring in products and product variants and collections from Shopify. We're going to import all those into TakeShape. And now if we look at our, what we're looking at now is the actual schema that defines uh, our API. And we've got, uh, importantly, kind of this, this idea of a product type. And then we have all of the different queries and mutations that are now available to us on our API that we've now deployed to, to TakeShape. And we can see that we some of our API uh, queries are actually using two services at once. So we can actually read and write from multiple sources at the same time using the same TakeShape API. So if we were to just look over in our, in our product view here, we get our product is now a composite type that is uh, a name field, which lives in TakeShape's data store. And Shopify fields, which are coming off of Shopify. And we could see that in our in our schema at, at the same time. Uh, and this is just our schema represented visually. So if I look at my, if I look at say my, um, my actual Next.js project that's running this site over here, this next project over here, this is the main query that runs that homepage. Um, it's getting a list of looks and it's getting you know the name of our look and and some text and things like that. All of all of these fields are coming from TakeShape's own data store, and then it's getting a, a list of products for each look. And that list of products is a composite of the TakeShape data store name that we're providing on the the type, and then information that comes straight off of Shopify. And so if I grab this query and I just run it inside of our API Explorer over here. Uh, we'll actually see uh, we'll actually see what can, what comes back from that. Oh, let me pop over to this one. The bad query. So our looks come back, our products come back off of Shopify, our prices come back. If we were to say like go and update our price over in Shopify, maybe our beanies are on sale this week, not $24, maybe they're 19 bucks. We can run that query again, and then we can, uh, we can get that updated price off of, off of Shopify. So the, the idea here behind the, the, the idea of an API mesh is that you're able to take multiple sources of data from multiple different APIs, join them together and push them out and, and uh, into a single GraphQL API. So in this example, we're looking at Shopify and TakeShape. We could easily add additional services if we wanted to, to add additional things uh, to our, our uh, API mesh. I'm just grabbing a Rick and Morty API over here. Uh, that's a publicly available API and it, uh, it will pull back uh, all sorts of information about Rick and Morty. Uh, and if I pop back over into my uh, my schema over here, I can actually connect up uh, our, our Rick and Morty API. We can we can hook up to any GraphQL or REST-based API. Uh, and 
Uh, let's give ourselves a good, good slug, good namespace. There's no authentic authentication for this API. And so we can add in a new API into our mesh and, and bring that down. Um, Take shape will go and introspect the API, and we can do this with GraphQL or Open API APIs. Um, it'll introspect the API, it'll figure out what queries and mutations and types are available, and then it'll let us pull that down and update our, our schema uh, using the UI rather than doing it man writing the schema manually by hand. And then if we wanted to, we could associate Rick and Morty characters with products, um, but at the most baseline, we can do things like now query our Rick and Morty characters and get their names back uh, from, from the Rick and Morty API. We add a little bit of uh, special sauce on here, which is a little debugger, which gives you tracing information about what, your AP, what the API request is doing and what services it's hitting and what the performance of those various services are. Um, but really, it's a platform for uh, creativity and, and, and uh, you know, building, uh, building interesting things on top of. And we're trying to answer the question with TakeShape API Mesh about what happens when, when your, your applicant, when, what happens when you would otherwise need to write some backend code, uh, but don't want to be writing backend code for, uh, for your Jamstack app. And I think that's that's what I've got. I, I don't want to take any time away from Sean, and I, I'm I'm very interested in, in hearing Sean's talk. So I will uh, I will pass it back to to Jim, um, and I'll or maybe I'll open it up for. Do we have a, if we have a, a minute or two for questions? I'll open it up for questions if people have have a question. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, so if folks have, I, I have a couple questions, but I want to make sure that folks have a, a chance to ask um, who are um, on the call. So if people have questions for Mark, uh, feel free to fire away. I'll start it off. Maybe that'll, that'll work. Um, so, Mark, this this looks great. I, I think um, it, it's like super powerful. I've known known from talking with you and kind of looking at through your stuff. Like, take shape integrates with tons of different services. It looks like you know you can just pick Shopify off uh, right off the top. Um, and then you just demonstrated the Rick and Morty API. It looks like that was like a like a custom API that you just set up really easily right through the interface. Now, if I want to like um, if I had some custom web app that had a REST endpoint or something like that. How easy would it be for me to set it up through the interface? Because I, it looks like behind the scenes, you're actually going and you're transforming that somehow into GraphQL that then the end user can then build their app off of. So is that process something I could set up through the UI or, or how would I go about integrating with like a, a custom REST endpoint? Yeah, so if you had a custom REST endpoint, it's just about plugging in the endpoint information and any credentials that are in, in, involved with that. Right now, we support GraphQL and, and REST endpoints. And uh, Rob, who's, who's on the call here today, is working on our open API integration as well, which will allow you to do the introspection um, and basically uh, let you automatically pull in, uh, pull in uh, you know, those queries and mutations directly through the UI. But if you had a custom REST endpoint, you, right now, what you would do is you would Add the add the endpoint to the API mesh, and then you could export your schema, uh, and then work on it locally and do some local dev on it. Uh, and then we have a CLI tool that lets you re-import it uh, up to Take Shape. So you could export it, work on the schema, re-import it, and then it would it would fire up with your your new uh, endpoint and any new types or queries and mutations that you set up. So what we allow you to do with that schema, um, there's a lot that you can do with the schema, but like one of the more one of the more interesting things that you can do is we support a bunch of different directives. So pretty much anything that you can do with underscore JS, you can do inside the schema. So if you needed to translate data from one type to another, um, or you needed to do some basic logic in the schema, you could you could do all of that, and then you could bring, be bringing in your your other uh, your other API. That's awesome. And and something like um, so obviously if you're Using GraphQL um, for the client app, something like Gatsby that has that capability set up would be really easy to use with Take Shape, I imagine. What would the process look like for something maybe like Hugo or some other static site generator where that um, that layer is not necessarily built in? Is that something you would rig up yourself, or how would you approach that? Ooh, I'm I'm not so plugged into Hugo and the the various. Uh, 
I'm not sure. a Huguenot. Yeah. Um, but if you can if you can make a, a request to to GraphQL, uh, or if you can make a request to an endpoint and you know pa pass a GraphQL query to that, um, you know then you could you could easily use it. So the the interesting thing, so why the Next.js example is kind of interesting is because it's a blending of um, of statically rendered pages and then a potential opportunity for like a live API. And so one of the comparisons that people might draw immediately is, you know, how is it different than like a Gatsby source plugin or something like that? And the way that I, there's a, there's a lot of differences between the two platforms, but on, at a very surface level, the idea is that this is a live API that you can, that you can call and form into your own custom API. And so, um, it's not running at build time. It, it doesn't need to just run at build time. It can actually run in, in like a live, uh, pr like live production environment. And, you know, you can be making calls to this API straight from the client if you wanted to. Um, and, and that's kind of, that's part of the simplification of like the, the Jamstack API ecosystem is rather than managing a, a bunch of API connections from your client, you can, you can manage that from a single source. And get a bunch of benefits on top of that, including automated retry logic and error handling and caching and things like that. I think uh, one of the cool. So uh, just for other folks who didn't know, so Mark and I we talked about this before, and we we took a look together um, previously. And I thought like one of the things that um, really blew me away is the fact that so when you're thinking with Gatsby, you're really thinking just display, right? It's like a one-way data feed and takes shapes kind of like this brain that can actually manage like your. Uh, writing data back to your APIs and, and things like that. It's pretty uh, pretty interesting take on it. Um, so it looks like really powerful stuff. Yeah. Um, thanks, Jim. Yeah. Is there any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Mark. Very um, excited to, to check thank out. Thank you, Mark. Talk.